Hi everyone, it's Katie and welcome back to another 31 Days of Tarot. Today we are looking at my most used decks of 2018. Now I think this was supposed to be one deck but I've narrowed it down to three um, because I'm genuinely not sure which edge is out in front of the others. Um, but these definitely <laughs> spent a lot of time on my table this year. We'll start with this one which is the Minute Tarot. Um, this I was very lucky to get, I think I got the last copy because um, it is an out of print deck now. Um, and I got it late last year, or late 2017, year before, goodness, gonna take me a while to get used to that. Um, so I got it like December or November, I think of 2017, and it quickly became a deck that I just was, I just was enamored of it. I just, <laughs> I just think it's such a fun little deck. I just think it's charming. And I just really enjoyed reading with it. I spent a lot of time with it. I would use it to read for myself. I used it to read for others. It's a great little size to make it really easy for larger spreads because um, it's not too big, but it's also not too small. I wouldn't call it a mini deck, but it's definitely on the smaller size or side. And it's quite clearly <laughs> very much just a Rider Waite Smith clone. It's just the Rider Waite Smith redrawn. Um, and I've, as I've explained before, basically there was a time limit that the artist gave herself um, to create each of these cards in five minutes which is, you know, where we get this kind of sketchy, um, organic, kind of simple um, sort of artwork that is very, very much inspired by the Rider Waite Smith, obviously. It's just a really fun one to read with. Um, it's kind of really good at giving snappy, quick readings. Um, but because it's based on the Rider Waite Smith, you know, it's, there's, there's all of that symbolism, well, at least most of it is still there. Uh, so we can still draw um, what we need to um, to go deeper and I just love it I love the colors I love the borders I love like this the handwritten titles <laughs> I love the quirkiness of it I think it's just really quite charming and sweet and quite it has quite a like a playful energy to it too which I just really enjoy so this was a deck that I just went to time and time again this year it was just a bit of a it kind of became my standard or my go-to Rider Waite Smith in a lot of ways. Like I still have the Rider Waite Smith, uh, a copy of it like um, in order set up on my desk just cause I like to reference it sometimes. But I didn't really use it a whole lot this year. Instead I found myself using this deck, which was really interesting cause the Rider Waite Smith, the Centennial um, has kind of been a bit of a staple for me over the years. Whereas it feels kind of almost like this has replaced it in some ways. It has a very different energy, but still just you know, very, very Rider Waite Smith in, um, in the images um, and just a lot of fun to read with. Next, we have another little deck that is very Rider Waite Smith. Um, and perhaps, you know, I go to these decks just because they're so easy and reliable um, in terms of reading with them. Um, other decks maybe feel a little bit more specialized. So even though I might use them a lot for specific things, um, maybe they feel a little less, I don't want to say generic, but... Um, I suppose it's just like a good pair of jeans, you know, even though they might not be your favorite item, that would be like, you know, your favorite fancy dress or whatever. Um, you don't, you're probably not going to wear that dress every single day. You're going to save it for special occasions. Maybe that, maybe that analogy is stretching a bit far, but I hope, I hope you get what I mean. These are like my comfortable jeans. I love them. I love this deck. It's such a fun one. I did a review on this one. Um, and I think, I don't know, I, I got quite, deep in a lot of ways with how I described this deck but that's my experience of it you know it looks just like a kind of cute quirky version of the Rider Waite Smith um with these little creatures and this whole little world that's been created it definitely is very Rider Waite Smith I think if you're a beginner this would be a very very easy deck to learn with and read um for me it was just like you know I just jumped straight in and it was just it was just a joy it was fun kind of felt like I was discovering this little world through the lens of tarot and it just became a deck that I went to again and again and again and again which did quite surprise me because I wasn't this deck wasn't really on my wish list it was a deck that I'd seen um Temperance Tarot Tracy had done a um a video about it I remember her speaking really really highly of it and she loved it and I'd been kind of curious about it since then. And I, I looked it up after I saw Tracy's video and I was like, oh, it's adorable. But with the shipping and everything, I just, I didn't love it enough <laughs> to buy like the cost of shipping. 
And largely that was just, you know, it's another Rider Waite Smith deck. Do I really need another Rider Waite Smith clone with cute little animals instead of people? Um, and my answer then was no. Um, but I always kind of had it in the back of my head that if it ever came up for trade or sale in Australia, I'd consider it. And eventually it did. Um, so maybe, I don't know, mid last year, mid 2018. I don't know. I'm so bad at keeping track. I probably got it written down or um, whenever I did the unboxing or review would give a, a sense of when I got this deck. It popped up on one of the Australian buy, sell, swap tarot Facebook groups and the person I bought it for agreed to give me a good little deal and it arrived and I, I fell in love with it in the sort of way that you do this sort of artwork. It was adorable and I love the colours. But then I started reading with it and I just kind of never really put it down. It was just a really easy deck to read with, um, but because of that kind of interesting detachment um, from our kind of what we see as normal, our social norms um, and our just regular, I don't know, I felt like this, this deck was somehow detached from our Western mind, our Western culture, enough to provide this really almost fey, like this, this curious, light-hearted, objective, but somewhat funny, humorous view on our, on our world and our, and our problems and our feelings and our issues. It's been a really interesting deck to work with that such a Rider Waite Smith clone style deck could have such an interesting perspective for me, or at least allow me to tap into that. I don't know, I just had a lot of fun working with this deck, and it did, it just became one of those decks that I go to over and over and over again. Um, if you got a reading from me this year, good chance it was with this one, or at least one of these other two. Um, and it just, it's such, it's such a pretty deck too, a very fun one. Another deck that surprised me a lot, I think I also got this at the end of 2017, but, it very, very quickly became a deck that I just didn't really put down. This was another one that surprised me. I'd seen it. It kind of was, oh, there was a lot of hype around this deck when it first came out. The Sassy Burrito or the Sassarai Bido by Stasha Barrington. There was just a lot of hype when it first came out. These cards are a little shiny. Um, and, I mean, I liked the look of it, but I didn't fall in love with it. And there was a couple of cards that just kind of put me off a little. One of the main ones being the Emperor, actually. Experiencing it in person was just a whole different thing for me than seeing it online. And then reading with it, reading with it just took it to a whole nother level. It does come with a little book that I also fell in love with. I love the way that the author writes and how these cards and the meanings that they're provided in the book all just feel really personal and intimate. Intimate is a word that I kept using over and over again in the review I did of that deck and I stand by that because that's been my experience. All of this, it feels like really vulnerable, intimate moments with these characters and they feel so real. Like they feel like actual people and like we've been allowed little tiny snapshots into their lives, into their experiences which is just a really quite special thing, really. It's a great deck to kind of get through to our, the emotional core of what's going on behind our experiences. And also it's just a really easy deck to read with. It's just one of those decks that as soon as I started lying, laying out the cards, I just felt like it spoke to me. Like it had a voice that I heard instantly. Decks like the Fantastic Menagerie and the Stella's Tarot and the Guild Tarot, they all do that for me. And this was another deck that did. And so when a deck is just so effortless and enjoyable to read with, it's hard not to go back to it time and time again. And that's what I did with this deck over and over and over. So these three decks would be my most used tarot decks of 2018. I used them so often for both myself and readings for clients and other people. And I just had a lot of fun doing so. I think 2018 was a great one, especially the first half of 2018. I read so much and had so much fun doing it. So that's all for this 31 Days of Tarot. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you all again next time. So much love. Bye.